Hello guys, I'm very happy to see you today. Uh, welcome to episode 7. This means that yesterday you've created the inside of the house. Whether you use the cyber free asset or you use your own assets or you went all out and <laughs> took the interior essentials from Goody Cream, whatever you did or you painted yourself or you used the, the kit, sky's the limit. So now uh, we made the, the innkeeper as well, everything worked. We made the teleport, we can zone in and out. So today we need to move on to the, the main object loader because no matter what I want to explain next, I have to explain this thing and this connects to everything. So in this episode, I'm going to explain uh, the, the main object loader. Uh, this is our first introduction to it. So I'm just going to cover like 75% uh, of it, the, the easy part. So and then I'm, we're gonna create chest and we're gonna create enemies, and uh, and all that. So uh, yeah. So uh, I I say this once again. Uh, this is a voiceover. So uh, while I have note, which are my time timestamps, because uh, I do the French version first. Uh, I still have some lag in guessing what I'm doing. <laughs> so right now uh, he's talking about. Uh, the main object loader, all the scripts in the game, all, everything that makes uh, the, the kit uh, a game, everything that makes the demo work, are organized into the main object loader. So the main object loader is like the, the big daddy that, that makes everything work. But uh, big daddy needs all, all his children, so those are all his children. The UI, the player, um, the game manager is a big one. So when you open the game manager, right there you see their party member uh, 0 to 4, 0 to 3. Um, those are the, the four current existing uh, players in the game. This is where you configure the player, but we won't do that right now. It's too dangerous. <laughs> so right now uh, we're going to look at uh, stuff uh, that is required for today's uh, subject specifically. So we're talking about um, about the... <coughs> the item uh, manager, the ba uh, so the first two categories are the items that you spawn with in your pockets. Right after that, you have the the um, the gold that you spawn, uh, <laughs> one hundred gold. Your your hard earned money is right there. I, I'm making the screen a bit bigger on my side because I have trouble reading. It will be easier to make a voiceover. Ah, I see so much better now. Okay, so now I see what I'm doing. <laughs> so the, the chest is a list. Uh, those are the, the 14 chests that are in the demo. Uh, if you uh, delete any of them, when you save your game in the demo, it will forget the existence of that chest, so it will not remember it. So this, these are the, the 14 uh, entries, the 14 elements for the chest that are currently used in the demo of the game. So if we want to add chest, we are simply going to add new ones by clicking the plus button. Uh, we won't uh, erase the demo things. They are not bothering us. Later, I'll make a separate episode showing uh, how to purge the demo stuff if you want. Otherwise, uh, just we are just going to add new stuff. There's no point right now into uh, removing and breaking the demo. So after the chest setting, there are the, the, the quest settings. The quest settings, uh, those uh, are the, the quests that currently exist uh, in the demo as well. So uh, talk to mom if you play the demo, you need to talk to your mother to go outside of the house. Then you need to visit the shop, take, talk to your mother again. Then when you talk to a second player, Alice, you will join the party. Then you go save the guy by pushing a log and you go flip the switches and beat the gourmet. So that's the regular progression of the demo of the game. So basically, you can make a RPG uh, right from there, but we're gonna create our own quest. Uh, like in my project, uh, I got uh, hundreds of uh, hundreds of elements and those uh, things. Uh, you, you, there's no limit. Uh, maybe there's a limit. I don't know yet. <laughs> like uh, 1,000. I don't know. But so far, I'm uh, close to 200 per section, and I have not met a limit yet. So after that, there are the event uh, settings. The same principle. You list every single uh, element. Uh, event in order to be able to call them in the structure of the kit. Um, if it makes no sense to you, believe me, it makes a lot of sense. This is all part of the, the time that we save. So um, now we are at the five minute marks. So I'm gonna resume. Uh, uh, yeah, 
we're, we're not going to cover in this episode the event manager because this is a very complicated matter that needs a series of itself or <laughs> not a spin-off. I mean, it's going to need a complete episode uh, and it's not right now. This is pointless right now. We don't even have run speed yet. We, <laughs> we haven't cast a first fireball yet. It's not the time to create events. So, yeah. So this was all in the game manager. Once again, this is in the main object loader. Main object loader is the thing that organizes Unity into an RPG making game. Uh, through all of the children. Now, gonna check the audio manager. Uh, this I just show real fast that the player manager is there, but I strongly suggest not touching a single thing until we get there. You're gonna everyone breaks their character. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, audio manager. So, by default, uh, everything is closed. You need to open them. Otherwise, uh, the same principle that everywhere, guys. Uh, Arjum, um, Arctentrian made this uh, very um, coherent. It's uh, compatible. It's um, it makes sense. It's what I'm, I'm getting at. <coughs> so, you have uh, sound effects, and then you have background music. So, you can um, lazy the system and just put your own songs and put them in those slots uh, in the element slots and you're gonna have the demo with your own songs uh, you just have to refer the elements properly but this is not the professional way to make a game so we are going to add the elements ourselves and to create them and to integrate them into the audio manager properly when we get there uh, it will make a, an audio episode don't worry for now uh, it's not important so then we go into the battle manager, and this is the, the, the important part. Uh, we covered the part for the chest and stuff, but this is the part for the, the battles. So here you have the, the, the skills. The, those are all the skills in the game. So um, the base skills in the game. So you can upgrade any of those. And what you do, of course, you, let's say you take Blizzard, you duplicate it, you rename it Blizzard 2, you duplicate the stats, then you only have to and turn the list of the skills. Uh, Blizzard 2 exists, so you would click on the plus button and uh, you have a few more steps to do. I, I will do all that uh, when we get there uh, in a, uh, shortly. Uh, this is not uh, advanced stuff. We will do that uh, in a sh soon. <laughs> so after, uh, after the skills, you have the prefabs. Those are the character prefabs. So currently in the game, there are four existing playable battle characters. You can uh, expand on that, of course, by duplicating them and reskinning them uh, like uh, anything in Unity, basically. But uh, here in the kit, it's all organized uh, in a way uh, that helps uh, uh, that help uh, <laughs> people without uh, a doctorate to understand. You know, it, it's all organized, and um, so people uh, college degree can make games. You don't need to uh, have. Uh, not a PhD, but the, the, the master's degree. Yeah, sorry, I searched the name in English in my head. In French, it's a maîtrise. It's a maîtrise, uh, master's. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so uh, here is the list of the enemies that exist in the in the demo. Once again, you can duplicate and reskin, and we'll do all that. But for now, I want to to show you that those are the. This is where. Uh, we are going to need this information when we set the battle up because it's going to ask the name of the prefab and stuff like that. And it's where we're going to add new enemies as well. So here's the initiation tab. It's a big one as well. This is very important uh, if you want uh, later on when you want to branch off the aesthetics of the kit and really go deep and customize everything. Uh, but uh, that, that's for later. We're for now, the, the kit is perfect. We don't need to, to modify the base that we have. We need to use it to save time. And later, when our project is badass, then we can modify it, uh, customize it. So uh, I address the retreat uh, right here. <coughs> so our jump, if you hear me, uh, this is just an opinion. 35% rate chance of escaping is very brutal <laughs> someone that wants to escape I'm, I'm speaking about North, Ephemer, North America uh, kids my son, very lazy when he wants to run from a battle he needs to run from a battle so you need to crank that to 75 or 85% otherwise the, the children will hate the game 
uh, not being able to escape is something that I do on visible monsters because then you see the monster and thank you for that there is the option uh, cannot retreat so uh, yeah I don't know why I'm saying that <laughs> to you I'm just mentioning that uh, putting the base at having 65% chance to be sad is very sad so I like the yeah 15% chance to be sad this is a lot better for the children <laughs> this is just a suggestion everyone you can set your own retreat trait you can even put it uh, at something silly I'm just saying uh, my uh, I guess I'm saying my my game dev uh, theory uh, um, from expense uh, having a children and seeing him uh, rage quit every single uh, you know, uh, <laughs> he's born uh, when the Wii U uh, was dying. Then I got him a Switch. I, I've bought him literally every game that exists. I've seen him play everything. Uh, I know what he hates. Uh, I have to play the games that he hates. Every time he gets stuck in Undertale or whatever, I have to do the hard parts and all the, the parts that he hates. So I know all the parts that children hate in, in North America. And uh, Retreat Rate, uh, I assure you, you need to put that <laughs> very higher. They need to, to run. Otherwise, they... They get angry so then i move on uh, to spawning the first chest sorry i was <laughs> speaking a lot uh, it's hard to not um, improvise when i'm doing a voiceover uh, since i'm not hearing my french part speaking whatever so uh, we have dealt with the battle retreat thing i i went a bit overboard but it's okay because all i've done is spawn a chest and place it there then i show that you can play with the variables instead of uh, grid snapping personally i prefer it like that it's uh, it's so clean because later on when you do uh, a chest doesn't matter but when you place a character moving uh, moving npcs and stuff you want your scripts to be uh, to have a clean interface like uh, initial position 5.5 end uh, position you don't want to have a very long copy paste uh, stuff uh, that makes your code look worse than it actually is so me i prefer to to as much as I can to keep uh, the decimals uh, to a short. So in the chest, you have the chest ID. I named this one 001 because it's a smart thing to do, uh, not to complicate ourselves. Uh, this is gonna make the guide so easier to follow. Everyone has the same numbers. But uh, this is the, the list we were looking at earlier. We looked at the game manager, it had the chest manager, then had the chest list and they add the, the, the name of the chest that exists in the demo so now we created a new chest so we will have to add it in that list but later now i show that you can add gold so this chest i i selected the box and i put 400 gold now i will spawn a second chest and then the second chest we will put an item so right click to the rpg kit um, select the chest then i'm gonna place it once again i'm just gonna toy around uh, with the decimals because uh, I, I like to, to, to press my mechanical keyboard keys. <laughs> I have to use it as much as I can. Screw you, mouse. Screw you. I'm joking. So now uh, we've got this chest. So we have to name it, like I said. So 002. Eh, eh. <laughs> and then um, we have to check that box to make it an item. Now, where do we get the items? You go on the left, still in the prefab folder, but you go to items. Uh, remember when we were looking at the build settings, there are two dead scenes. One of those two dead scenes, uh, he had made the plus one sword in it, I think, and the plus one sword is still there. So we're gonna use that plus one sword and put it in the chest. But now I clicked on the sword, so I need to select the chest again. This is how it works. You need to have the, 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 the chest selected for the inspector to appear. This is uh, everywhere, not just the Twitter RPG kit, all over Unity, guys. This is how it works. So you know, once you put the chest in the field of the inspector, uh, this chest will have an item in it. But now I did not, as of yet, enter in the chest manager the existence of chest 001 and chest 002. So while the chests currently work, if I were to save the game right now and to load it, the game would not remember because uh, you have not told the game, and when I say the game, you have not told the ensemble of scripts under the main object loader that are all working together that there exist those two new chests and that they need to save and to load it when you save a game. This is all very simple code. I've extended my to, I have extended mine. Uh, quite a lot and I will uh, show you the basics of that in another video but for now uh, this is good enough so after that 
uh, we are going to add the items to the main object loader, though, because now I wanted to show that the, the chests are still going to work. They're just not going to save. <laughs> so, yeah, not only are they not going to save, they're not going to be, uh, they're not going to do all they're supposed to do. So now we go uh, to the main object loader, game manager, chest setting. We click on the plus item two times, twice, and then we can add the chest numbers. Now we need to save the flow, control S or whatever, um, and you go back into the scene by clicking the, the back arrow uh, like I'm doing right now. Uh, so then what am I going to do? I look at the, I spawn Ballaria, yeah. Now uh, I took a little bathroom break or whatever, and now we're going to spawn the battle area, but there are multiple uh, types of battle areas, so we're going to spawn three of them but just one at a time so right now you right click by the same place that you get the chest and the npc and everything and you spawn the battle area so you got this uh, nice uh, green rectangle that looks like a smaller version of the camera rectangle but it's just a collider so you go in the inspector and uh, right there you see uh, there are a lot of stuff going on here so we need to start from uh, from somewhere so here there's a encounter rate so the easy, normal, hard, you can set different encounter rates. So I think this is self-explanatory. I'll go deeper in that later when I troubleshoot uh, in the video. Then you have the battleground sprite. Right now, by default, it says missing a sprite because we did not use uh, a prefab that comes from the demo. We used a, a blank, a blank battle area. We will configure it together. <clears throat> and then you have uh, the choice to activate on enter exit. Is it a single battle? Is it unbeatable like a story bus? Is it uh, no retreat? Does it complete a quest? And so on. So I'm just gonna wait. Yeah, now he's gonna show the sprites. So uh, the 2D RPG kit comes with a folder with uh, a cave and an overworld battle backgrounds. So um, yeah, uh, we are in a city. So neither of them makes much sense, but it's okay. We're going to make three battle areas to see uh, all three uh, different. I say three because we're going to do the, the no background option also. So by default, I think in the kit he did that. So I did the same here, uh, 9, 8, 7. But uh, we will see later the problem while you're in uh, Unity versus when you play the normal progress of the program. So now um, this one is going to be a battle arena Final Fantasy style, which means an invisible one that you walk and sometimes a monster appears. So I remove the activate on exit because you want to uh, actually, um, you might want to not activate either of them and just rely on the enemy counter and think about it. But either way, we have not went through the title screen, so we're, the game does not even know for easy, normal, or hard right now. So uh, ju just bear with me. So here we're gonna deploy the menu and then we can say we want uh, like one enemy. Earlier in the battle prefab, we seen the list of enemies that exist in the kit. So in this episode, we will not create a new monster. This episode, we will use what we have for the purpose, because uh, this is the purpose of a kit, it's to get you into it, it's to, you see everything, you learn everything, how, how everything works, the information is delivered uh, in a way that is very well organized, so me, I'm the guy that, that uh, dis de deciphers, that, that bridges uh, for people without uh, uh, IT education to get into something that is essentially uh, like a baccalaureate level, uh, uh, computing, but uh, me, I, I make the bridge by giving you painful details on how to do everything so you can just copy and you'll end up with something that looks and feels professional. So, yeah, so this list I was talking about, you see the crow. So, there you have the crow. If you click on it to inspect it, you see the character name crow. This is the name that you actually need to put into the field of the battle area inspector. So, I copy it with the control C. <coughs> Then I go back to the scene with the back arrow. Now I click on this. Oh, I forgot to mention because I was talking, but you need to left click, drag and drop box collider 2D into the fill for it to become red. Um, yeah, sorry, I did not say it vocally in English, but uh, you need to do it. So now I, I wrote the word crow into element zero. So you see it says crow. So this area is technically ready to be tested, even though there, there are errors in it that I will address later. So now we'll spawn a second uh, battle area. So right click to the RPG kit. Uh, battle area. This one will make it different. 
the next two are going to be visible monsters instead of invisible monsters. However, I'm gonna use the same monsters. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm gonna change my mind later, but I'll fix it. I just don't <laughs> that the confusion between the versions. I, I'll end up with bats uh, for the visible enemies, but I, I'll change it later. So here, I, since it's going to be a visible enemy, visible enemy is not uh, like a Final Fantasy style. It's more like Chrono Trigger style. Like you see him, you see the enemy, you 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 engage him. So it whatever. So now uh, you don't need to enter values into the encounter rate because it's going to be a collision based. So um, yeah. So then uh, for the sprite for this one, instead of the overworld, I'm going to put uh, the cave one just for fun no no reason just to <laughs> test the sprites because actually you would want to make uh, something that makes sense for the scene where the monster is you know uh, those scenes uh, the cave is designed for the cave in the demo and the overworld is designed for the overworld and they make sense for those scenes but in our city scenes uh, they uh, barely make sense so look at how i configure the scene i make it single battle i make it uh, no retreat this is a choice but I, I think it, if you can retreat, it's basically gonna erase the monster. I mean, it's cool if you're speed running, but I, th I think that's a, there, that there's no fun in that. If you put a visible monster, it, it must be guarding something precious, or it must have a purpose. Perhaps he even has a portrait, or <laughs> I don't know, but the, I think that visible monsters, you should not be able to retreat. Uh, up to you guys. This is a game uh, game design opinion. So the second battle area, I do uh, the thing that I, that I did uh, where you slide the box collider do the uh, from your own inspector into the field at the bottom that we barely see because the size of the screen, I'm sorry about that. Uh, if you have problem repeating the step, uh, please ask question in the channel. I will uh, I will uh, do the English, uh, explain the better in English, but you can uh, go watch Arc and Tryon's uh, guide on uh, YouTube, the official uh, maker of the Twitter RPG. 2D RPG kit, he already covers uh, a lot of uh, the details I'm covering in this episode. I'm just oving, uh, going over uh, more details because this is not like a, this is not like a, the, the same type of same type of video. So then I spawn another uh, bat. <laughs> this other bat, instead of dragging the prefab uh, from um, from the prefab folder, that's why you were seeing like a uh, HP silence, whatever. It's why I clicked on this child uh, child uh, status and I deactivated the component in the inspector because I don't want to, to visually see those information because you're not supposed to drag a prefab. I just want to show you that you can. And then what I do is I drag a, a sprite. I just went to the sprite, so not a prefab, but the actual PNG picture of the bat. So the difference between the two is that the one on the left, the, the one that is the prefab that I just deactivated the information, uh, is a prefab and it will over, like it will be floating, like overing. So that, that that's kind of cool for, for a bat, but he's not flapping his wings. That's where you need to animate your own stuff. You won't be able to animate uh, a, a sprite like this. You need to uh, Google a free tile set. Uh, there is a literally hundreds of thousands of them. You can animate your own monsters, and I will go over that in another episode. So for now, I say that you need to put um, uh, you need to put him on a player layer, otherwise it will be uh, under the, the, the ground when you make the sprite appear. And then you need to put a box collider 2D on him. So you click add component, box collider 2D, and you need to click is trigger. Because you don't want, uh, you want, I mean, the, the, the collision with the bat to give a trigger message to the battle area. This is the whole point of the trigger. So now I'm gonna resize. Uh, I'm gonna resize it though, cause uh, <laughs> I don't want to enter in battle from so far away uh, with the bat. So far away. I don't know what that from. <coughs> so yeah, now um, in French I'm going over the child parent concept. So yeah, I just drag the bat into the battle area. Careful when you uh, drag and drop. You, you you need to visually have this result. Uh, in the hierarchy so now the bat is a children of the battle area that means that since it's a single battle configured area in the inspector when you defeat the bat you will disappear and the battle as well so this is why you need to make him a children 
So uh, this is just uh, something that's uh, all over uh, programming in Unity. It's not something that's specific to the kit. I'm just telling you guys uh, the concept of parent and children. Um, yeah, won't get into classes right now, but uh, for, for the hierarchy, the concept of uh, children of parent. So now I'll do the same, but uh, with the other bat. But uh, the other bat, I only made a sprite. I only dragged the sprite and put a collider on it. I did not yet make his battle area, so we're gonna make a third battle area. So right click to the RPG kit, battle area. And this third battle area is going to be to use with the no background to see what happens when you put no background uh, BG or if you put a transparent PNG, uh, whichever you do. So uh, by this time I noticed that it's a bat and it's not a crow. So <laughs> I, I wrote the proper name, but uh, anyway, uh, this is all stuff that happened in the French version. I'm sorry, uh, you English people, you're not missing out on a lot anyway, but uh, for the desynchronization of me speaking and what's going on, I'm very sorry. Uh, I'm doing my best. So uh, here I'm gonna make uh, the, new, the, the, the sprite bat the children of the third battle area that I configured, or that I'm gonna configured. So I moved the, uh, cause I want uh, only to have a battle when I touch the red thing, you know? So you need to make it smaller. And sorry if I use like fourth grade language, uh, I do this on purpose because this is a low level unity. Uh, this is the start of the series, so I, my, I assume that my audience is mainly people that needs me to talk like this way. So I'm very sorry, people that are more advanced, if I say a lot of things that you already know. But please bear with uh, us as we try to uh, make a community, and it's together that uh, we we become smarter. Like I've mind. <laughs> So, yeah, I place it uh, on the corner there, not to uh, contaminate, quote-unquote, the entire scene. So now we're going to test uh, all three types. So there you see the two bats. Uh, well, I I'm just showing it. I'm just equipping some stuff because I'm a big brain before attacking. So you see it, there's a one that's like literally T-posing, not moving at all. Then the one of the left, you see him slightly overing. So this is the one that was a prefab that I just um, deactivated the status. So he's moving because the, the creator uh, made an animator for it that made him over. So now, as you see, there's two rem on the screen. Oh my God, who killed Kenny? This is terrible. So I need to explain why this happens. This is because we put no background image or it will happen if you put a transparent image. This is because the way the battle works, it's basically a layer in front. So no matter the layering you were using while you build the scene when you enter a battle scene it's going to be on top of that quite simply so now since you make it invisible or have not put a picture in the slot what you see is this in the prefab uh, main uh, folder you see rem is this is rem world rem world is the guy that you move in all four directions but the guy on the right with the blue arrow on his head, this is Rem Battle. I Rem Battle. This guy is only, he's not moving. He's on the side and he attacks. You cannot control in all four direction Rem Battle. This is what Rem Battle does. Rem Battle is a sprite, is an object with a sprite attached to it. And this object has motions, it has properties, it has stuff that I won't get into because I don't want to make your brain bleed. But what I'm getting at is you need to use battle backgrounds not to see both dimensions of the player. It's like, uh, oh my god, multiple realities. Yeah, basically. So this is the second bat. You see when it's in combat, it's overing. It's like, oh, so this is where the overing comes from. When you put a prefab, you're basically putting the animated version of the enemy. The one that's overing and when you put the sprite directly you're just gonna have a sprite that you need to animate yourself we will go over how to animate it uh, it's not that hard but there are levels to it in previous episode we did the lowest level which is a blinking a light we'll do the next level uh, soon so i'm just gonna beat that bat real fast <laughs> is bat shit crazy nah so um whew, five health Good thing I equipped the shield and the sword. You see the big brain strat right there. Big brain strat. When you level up, it heals the character. So now I'm, I'm new anyway. So now we go in the, 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 the scene and we see now it's strange. The battle start right away. Mm, that's not normal behavior. Usually you make a few steps before the battle starts. Especially since I put values like 9, 8 and 7. But uh, what's going on right here that I'm going to explain is that the normal way you execute a program 
is gonna be uh, the title screen and then you're gonna do either a new game continue or exit or whatever if you add more menus and then if you do a new game it's gonna ask you easy normal or hard and then you enter the game from the first scene in this case it's gonna be when you wake up and your man your mom turns on the light if you're in the demo uh, but here we are not into the build right now we are in a scene uh, that is not connected to title screen or anything so when we go into our scene from the unity editor we are actually not going through the process of assignating easy normal or hard so the the thing that is triggering the battle right now is not going on as it should if uh, i had uh, <laughs> but that's not the, the the games or unities or uh, i mean yes it's unity's fault it's uh, not a problem it's normal behavior it's because we are in the editor because we have not passed by the title screen and stuff it behaves this way otherwise uh, if uh, we were playing of a save game right now and the save game you had selected a uh, difficulty then the battle uh, uh, would behave normally because it would have information to tell it uh, is this easy normal or hard but whatever uh, the, the next battle area that we will make uh, well it is configured properly what i'm trying to say is that the 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 reason why it doesn't seem to work properly right now is only because we are in the unity editor with a fresh game that did not go to the title screen this behavior will not happen in your product but either way it works i just saying that it doesn't work as I, as it should if we were using the game normally damn this must be boring to hear sorry trying to explain stuff uh, like that after after it's like a, a false positive that i'm trying to to describe kind of so um yeah so now i'm showing the title screen just to conclude on that idea uh, so when you do a normal game uh, in the dirty rpg kit you go to this menu i was describing and you actually select something because there are three fields in inspector but when you're directly in unity yes you you skip all of that so uh, i assume somewhere the code is like okay uh, what are you easy normal hard the game is not crashing so he, he programmed it in a way that it, it can return a non-event so it's just using other stuff to uh, activate the battle it's not using those values if you're in the editor without using a save game like we're doing right now but don't worry it all works uh, when you test the game uh, my game is very far along and i've built tested it on many platforms uh, it all works it all works just trust the system trust what i do do the same thing that uh, what me and uh, arctantrion are doing in the guides so I think we're going to get to a point where we uh, resume everything that we've done uh, today. It was a big episode. Uh, once again, I'm sorry for this being a voiceover. You have to understand that uh, refilming myself, I would need to <laughs> delete everything and then not to it already be there. And it's like, that, that sounds like a lot of work. Find someone else that does everything in two languages. I don't think much people do it. If they do, it's probably like AI voice dub. No, no, me, I do everything in both languages, but I'm not going to film a second time. Sometimes I do, but not for long uh, technical episodes like this. So, um, yeah. So we went over everything in the main object loader. We went over the fact that all information used everywhere in the game, whether you spawn a chest, you spawn a monster, you create a new enemy, you create a new skill. Whatever that you do, you will need to use the system that is in place if you want to maximize uh, the usefulness of the kit. So basically, if you want to save the most time. Because you took a kit, it's not only to learn, but it's to save a lot of time. Because I hate to repeat myself, but uh, I have to... Uh, this is months and months of work. Uh, uh, if you started from a black screen like I did in Python uh, last year, <laughs> we would not be... a uh, let's make what two or three hours you're listening to the tutorials you got a scene with monsters inventory chest and pc and keeper you have to be objective guys this is literally uh, this is so much hour even if you paid yourself five pennies an hours you already recuperated the cost of the kit <laughs> yeah so w we're gonna push this out further so thank you for watching In the next episode we'll be able to go deeper as we have now covered a lot of great stuff
So hi everyone, thank you very much for staying until the end of the video. I'd like to take this time to uh, to ask you to please go on Steam and uh, wish this my game. Also, uh, you can go on uh, Twitch to see me doing some live development occasionally. If you're a super chad or super chadet, you can uh, do additional uh, support on Patreon. Otherwise, please like and subscribe. Those are really uh, what I'm looking after because I need to reach uh, 500 subscribers to even be able to get some sort of uh, income from YouTube. Until then, I I'm doing this all for free. So thank you for subscribing very much.